Check it out, Casper! Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in, and welcome back to Rebalance, the series where we look at underpowered, overpowered, underused, and overused weapons. We discuss why they are considered as such, and I give a few suggestions on how I think this weapon could be rebalanced, and ultimately ask you guys to help fix the weapon at hand. Today, we're talking about a weapon that has been requested pretty much every episode since this series began. The Righteous Bison. Let's take a look at this weapon's stats for an idea of how it's supposed to be used. So, if you didn't already know, the bison is a secondary weapon for the soldier, and its stats are that it doesn't require ammo, its projectiles penetrate enemies, and its projectiles cannot be reflected. The only sacrifice being that it does 20% damage to buildings. Well, that certainly sounds like a small price to pay for all the good things this weapon can do. But, we do have to remember that this is a replacement for the shotgun. Now, the shotgun is what we call a hit-scan weapon. In other words, when you click, the bullets hit the target immediately. This is opposed to a projectile-based weapon, which is what the bison is, where you shoot a bullet, that bullet travels through the air over time, and damage is applied when the bullet eventually hits the target. So immediately, the bison is at a disadvantage versus the shotgun, because it is objectively more difficult to aim and hit a projectile than it is using hitscan, because with hitscan, you simply just hold your cursor over the enemy and shoot. But with a projectile weapon, you have to aim at where you think your enemy is going to be in a certain amount of time, whilst also factoring both your projectile's travel speed and your enemy's move speed. And that's of course not to mention the fact that the enemy can just see the projectile coming and move out of the way. And I can definitely attest to this being a major drawback of the weapon. When trying to get clips for this video, it constantly felt like my projectiles were so easily avoided by the enemy, and it was almost impossible to hit people, even in close quarters. And to make matters worse, the bison actually has the slowest moving projectile in the whole game. Slower than the rocket launcher, or even the flare gun, which makes it extra hard to hit, and extra easy for an enemy to move out of the way before the projectile gets to them. And just to top it off, the bison only has four shots in the clip before you have to reload, versus the shotgun which has got six. So whilst we're on the topic of reloads, let's take a look at the time between shots and reload times of these guys, and for the sake of comparison, I'm just going to look at four shots from the shotgun. So here for the bison, we've got a shot, then 0.8 seconds between the next shot, 0.8 seconds again, 0.8 seconds again, and then 0.92 seconds to reload, which comes to 3.32 seconds. Similarly, from just four shots of the shotgun, you take a shot, then it's 0.625 seconds, 0.625 seconds, 0.625 seconds, and then one second to reload, and that comes to a total of 2.875 seconds. So even in the reloading department, the bison cannot outclass the default shotgun, bearing in mind that default will still have two more shots at the ready to fire before you have to reload, further embarrassing the bison in this battle. So surely the bison's damage stats will outclass the shotgun, right? Well, it is slightly awkward to compare these weapons due to the nature of shotguns firing multiple bullets or pellets in a cone shape, purposefully designed to be more effective at close range than at long range, as where a weapon like the bison, which is much more long range focus. On that note, however, if we compare these weapons at medium range, it's still not good news, I'm afraid. The shotgun will be doing around 50 to 60 damage, whilst the bison is only doing around 45. But, credit where credit is due, the bison will do more damage at anything more than medium range. If, of course, you can even hit someone with it. But, what about the three positive attributes of this weapon? Let's quickly remind ourselves what they are. First up, there's no ammo required. So what this means is that the gun functions much like the weapons from Overwatch, for example. You've got four shots in a clip, and now you reload, and you've got four shots again. There's no ammo reserve like there is with most TF2 weapons. You never have to go to ammo kits or dispensers after you've fired off, say, 32 bison bullets, which is what the shotgun has. But I ask you, how often do you run out of shotgun ammo? Sure, it can happen, but it's not going to be common especially not on your secondary weapon. If you're running out of ammo so often on your soldier secondary that you require a weapon which gives infinite ammo, then you're probably not playing correctly. The other positive attribute is that it penetrates players. Again, how often does this come up? Obviously, there's not that many weapons in the game with this attribute to use as reference, but I can promise you it's hard enough to line up even one person reliably, let alone multiple. And remember, this isn't something which explodes like a rocket or a sticky. It's just a bullet which moves in a straight line. So unless people are directly behind each other, you're very unlikely to hit them both. And to add insult to injury, this weapon has got a hidden stat 
where the damage is reduced for every player it penetrates. So even in the uncommon instances where you do manage to line up and successfully hit more than one person, every consecutive person is taking less damage. And the final positive attribute is that the projectiles cannot be reflected. Again, this isn't a bad thing, but it's just not something that's going to come up often enough to really make that much of a difference. And let's not forget that it only does 20% damage to buildings. Now that's not minus 20% like a lot of stats, that's actual 20% of normal damage. So instead of 45, each shot will only do around 9 damage, as if the bison needed any more weaknesses to its damage. So I don't think it's any secret that this weapon definitely falls into the underpowered category within regards to this video series. It's inferior to its alternatives not only in raw numbers, but also the fact that it fires projectiles, which are generally inferior to hitscan. And all of this weapon's positive attributes are certainly not bad, but they're all related to uncommon scenarios in TF2, where the benefit they offer is minor, especially compared to the massive downsides of the weapon. So, the fun part. How do we improve it? I think it's always important to preserve the core of a weapon's concept, if possible when suggesting changes. So in this case, I would like to see the bison stay as a projectile based laser weapon, and I would also like to see it able to hit multiple people. But I do have a couple of twists to that in mind. First off, I would like to see the projectile speed increased a decent amount. I'd also like to see the projectile size increased, or at the very least its hitbox. When using this weapon, I'm repeatedly left with the feeling, surely that hit? compared to the appearance of the bullet. With regards to the damage, which obviously isn't great, I don't think it needs to change. This weapon is an alternative to the shotgun, so there's no point making us fulfill the exact same role. It's okay for it to be less effective at short range, of course only if it is feasibly more effective at long range. My suggestions above to the speed and hitbox should make it more useful at those longer ranges, and then it's still at least viable as a desperation choice in close range. In terms of being able to hit multiple players, as we know, penetrating people in a straight line is rarely going to come into effect. Instead, I like to see some sort of chaining mechanic, where the laser can hit someone and this bounces damage over to players nearby, by all means keeping the same damage reduction per player as it currently has. Remember, we are trying to balance this weapon, not overpower it. Although my slight concern with this idea is that it's a bit too similar to splash damage on the rocket launcher, and we don't really want a primary and a secondary weapon which are pretty much doing the same thing. So as an alternate idea, to keep it different from the rocket launcher but maintaining the multiple people thing, what if it changed to heal targets just like the third degree for the pyro? So if you fire out a heavy medic combo and you hit either of them, both of them take damage. Personally, I think this is maybe a slightly better option than chaining to nearby enemies. And I say this quite often, but it's definitely worth repeating here, we have to consider the reasons that we would use our secondary weapon. One reason would be that our primary weapon is out of clip or out of ammo entirely, or our secondary weapon is better at this range, or our secondary weapon has got some utility value that our primary doesn't offer. In its current state, the bison is only really useful if we are out of primary ammo, as its utility functions are minor benefits, and its range isn't that different from the rocket launcher. Yes, we could use it in close range to avoid damaging ourselves, however, in those instances, we're probably better off using our melee weapon. With the third degree style property, we could at least use the bison to shoot at specific medic and enemy combos at range to at least do something more reliably effective than shooting with the rocket launcher and just hoping for splash damage. And finally, I think we should remove or at least tone down the damage to buildings penalty. It's a completely pointless stat on a soldier secondary as it is, given that the great building destroying power of the rocket launcher exists. But regardless, there's no point of having this attribute on the bison be so severe. So do remind you all that my suggestions to fix this weapon are just that. My suggestions based on my perspective, my experiences, and it's all subjective to a certain degree. You might disagree and that's fine. That's the whole point of this series, to open up the discussion about how to fix these weapons. So if you do have alternate ideas to mine, or indeed you do think that some of mine are pretty good, let me know in the comments here and together, hopefully we'll come up with a suggestion that sounds nice and rounded, that suits as many people as possible. And of course, this series is going to carry on. Take a look at everything we've done before, but don't forget to suggest what we should cover in the next episode down in the comments. So thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.